The candidates for the 2022 X-Men election have formally been announced by Marvel, and this year it's another crew of fan favorites and some characters that might make you cock your head and say, really? The nominees this year are Armor, Siren, Firestar, Avalanche, Surge, Bling, Gentle, M, Gorgon, and Micromax. Yes, Micromax. You can place your vote at marvel.com, but be sure to do it super quickly as the polls are closing very early this year and they're only open until midnight on January 13th. Similar to last year, the winner of this fan vote will receive the honor of joining the X-Men, which I guess is just something that's going to be happening every year now. The marketing material for this election indicates that the winner will be announced at the Hellfire Gala this year, so just like what happened last year, but if you ask me, doesn't this all feel like it's a bit too soon to be happening again? I know that they said the Hellfire Gala was going to be an annual event, but I really figured it was going to be like a canonical in-universe annual event, not something calendar year for us the readers. It feels like a big chunk of 2021 was dedicated to the X-Men election and the Hellfire Gala, and that was great because the idea was so novel and so new at the time, but to have to go through all of this again actually feels like it cheapens the fun that we had last year. It doesn't even feel like the current new X-Men team has even had the chance to get their footing yet, so to already be advertising a shakeup to that team just feels so sudden and unnecessary. Like, it's a super powerful team as it is, with lots of team dynamics that haven't even been explored yet, like Sink and Laura, so this whole idea of X-Men Vote 2022 just feels like we're really rushing things here. But I guess, like with everything, I must place my faith and my trust in Marvel and assume that it has a master plan for all of the concerns that I'm bringing up. Hopefully this election doesn't drag its feet in the way that I kind of think it's going to, and the whole experience will just be as fun as it was last year, if not a bit repetitive. So let's take a look at each of the candidates and see what they've been up to on Krakoa, and I'll give you my reason as to why I think they either deserve or don't deserve a chance to join the team. Armor. This is Armor's second year up for nomination to join the team, so it looks like Marvel is really trying to make her happen. In Armor's defense, she has had a lot of exposure whilst on Krakoa, so it's not like she hasn't been paying her dues. She's most well known for her time as a team member of the Astonishing X-Men team back in the day, but here on Krakoa, she was mostly frolicking around with the New Mutants, saving people from various forms of persecution, like when they saved Beacon Angel and their family from some anti-mutant doxing, or when they rescued Cosmar from her mutant-hating government. Armor also fought some giant monsters with Kid Cable and Pixie, and some rainforest monsters with Magma and Boom Boom, so she has definitely been keeping busy and has been put to good use on Krakoa, and I guess keeping her skills super sharp as well for when she finally will be brought up to join the main squad. I think Armor would be a fine addition, as I like her power set and I think it's unique enough to add some distinction to the team, but I don't like the idea of her being nominated again because she had her chance last year and she didn't make the cut, so why is she taking somebody new's spot here and being nominated again? I don't think that that's very fair when there are so many other underutilized characters who could be nominated here, so for that reason, I just cannot throw my support behind armor. Sorry girl, better luck next year. Siren Siren had a pretty okay year with X-Factor and helping her clean up the mess she was making with the Morrigan, even though it did get off to a rough start. She kept winding up dead over and over again, and when she was resurrected, she was super evasive with answering X-Factor's questions about what was going on, but in the end, it was because she had struck a deal with the Morrigan to give the Morrigan a thousand deaths, which meant Siren was going to kill herself a thousand times in order to keep the Morrigan from killing her friends en masse. Ultimately, Siren was freed of the Morrigan's influence by Shatterstar, so now Teresa is back to being her usual plucky self, and I guess she's ready to have maybe kind of like a redemption arc to prove that she's still got it by joining the X-Men. 
Siren is mostly known for her time on X-Force and in X-Factor Investigations, and I don't think she's ever formally been on any X-Men team, except maybe Moira's Muir Island X-Men team, but that squad was so obscure that I'm sure most people don't even count it as real. I actually really loved that team, and I think if Siren is looking to get on any X-Squad, then she should reunite that faction, because it is criminally underrated, and she would be great as a new leader of it. But as far as this election goes, if they wouldn't give it to my boy Banshee last year, then I don't think that Siren is the candidate to win this year either. Sonic Screams just don't seem to win the vote. Firestar Firestar is an interesting choice for the X-Men election because she's rarely ever been even associated with the X-Men. She's a mutant, but she's pretty much spent 100% of her time over in other books like New Warriors and Avengers throughout like, most of her career. She did debut within the X parameters though, as she was enrolled as a Hellion at Emma Frost's Evil Massachusetts Academy back in the day, and then much later she joined the teaching staff at Wolverine's Jean Grey Academy and joined the amazing X-Men on some adventures, but by and large she is not what one would consider your average X-Man. I really like Firestar, and I don't think it should be held against her that she doesn't hang out with the mutants too often. Lots of non-X characters come in and out of the X-Men's lives sporadically, like when Namor joined the team and Cloak and Dagger too for a very short brief time. What should be held against her though is that she basically has the same power set as Sunfire here, and there is literally no need for two flying fire-wielding mutants to be out on the field together. Unless this is going to be a completely new team, or Sunfire is leaving it, I just don't think Firestar is giving me the kind of versatility I'm looking for in my X-Men team, so for that reason, I don't think she should be the victor of this election. Avalanche. Bring on the bad guys! Marvel isn't doing the Krakoa era justice by not taking full advantage of the opportunities it has with heroes and villains living and working in the same scope. There is unprecedented opportunity right now for weird mishmashes of villain and hero teams, and Avalanche is a great example of someone who I can throw my support behind in terms of adding some ethical diversity into the team. He's mostly known for his time with the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and with Freedom Force, and the last big time we saw of him pre kokoa was during the Uncanny Avengers when the Red Skull kidnapped him and manipulated him into causing a suicidal ruckus that jump-started another war on mutants. On Krakoa though, he hasn't really been up to much at all, aside from partnering up with Sword and helping Emperor Hulkling maintain his sovereignty against Dormammu and Dormammu's mindless forces. I think that Avalanche's power set adds just the right kind of distinction that we should be looking for in an X-Men election. He has control over seismic generation, meaning he controls the Earth, but unlike Richter, who is now into Earth magic, Avalanche keeps it pretty simple and he's just about making big gaping holes and tremorous vibrations and stuff. He also owns a bar, or at least he did own a bar, so his mixology skills would be a great addition to the team, and he might even help Polaris get off the coffee, or at least give it some bite. Avalanche absolutely gets my support in this election, and I won't be mad if he comes out the victor. Bling. There is a heavy influence of the newer generation of mutants for this election, and Bling is a prime example of Marvel, I think, trying to push that agenda forward. I can't really say that Bling is a super compelling character for me, but she certainly isn't the worst either. She's got a unique look, and her power set of having rock hard skin and being able to shoot out diamonds is kind of fun, so I like that she would at least add something kind of different to the X-Men, but I just can't shake the question of, is she ready for this? The most we really saw of Bling and Krakoa was her time spent on Psylocke's Fallen Angels team, if we can call it a team, and if we can even remember that series at all, which truthfully, I barely can. She helped Quanon take down the drug god Apoth before he enslaved the population at large, but then she pretty much has been keeping it quiet ever since. Even though I love the idea of giving people opportunities, I just don't know if I see Bling on this iteration of the X-Men. It feels like she'd be a fish out of water with a bunch of heavy hitters and her playing catch up the entire time. She doesn't feel very seasoned yet to me, and even though I know it's like you can't get experience until people give you experience, it still feels too soon for her and I don't think that now is the time for bling. Surge. 
everything I said about Bling can almost also be said about Surge here too. She's part of the newer X generation who hasn't really been giving a ton of stories as of late. I remember back during the Utopia days, they really wanted to build Surge up as like a potential future leader within the younger X-Men, but then it's like that plan just completely disappeared and we never really got a ton of character development out of her, nor have we seen like any of her at all on Krakoa. Surge's power is twofold in that she has super speed and she can create electricity. Both of these would be assets for the X-Men team, as they don't currently have a speedster nor an electrician amongst them, so for diversity's sake, I think Surge might be a good addition, but the question remains. Is she even ready? I honestly feel like the New Mutants would be a better title for both her and Bling to be a part of before climbing the ranks to full-fledged X-Men. Gentle. Gentle is yet another new X-Men nominee that we haven't seen much of at all since Krakoa. It's not that I don't not want to see these characters be given some spotlight in some of the X-Books, I just don't know if graduating to the flagship X-Men team is really the answer for them. I kind of give Armor a free pass here since she's like of the younger generation but has the experience with the Astonishing team, so technically it feels like I should be giving Gentle a free pass as well since he has some experience with Jean's X-Men Red team. He has a very interesting disposition of calmness that I really enjoy, and I think it would be a unique addition to the personalities that are already there. Gentle's powers involve the growth of like muscle mass and durability, which at one time were impacted and limited by his own psychological scars of like past abuse, so he could only push himself so far before experiencing pain himself. Jean cured him of those psychological barriers that were impacting his control of his abilities, which is a shame if you ask me, because I thought those scars added a great layer to his character, but what it means is that the X-Men ultimately would have another brawler on their team, which is kind of a box that Rogue is already ticking, so not super needed if you ask me. I do think that his personality would maybe more than make up for the power duplication though, so for that reason, I'd be down with giving Gentle the vote. M. M is probably the front runner of who will win this election. She has the highest profile of them all amongst the fan base. she's generally a fan favorite, and has the most experience having previously been on several X teams like Generation X, X Factor Investigations, a weird team of Weapon Xers, and even on formal X-Men teams themselves. She also has a killer power set, which makes her a powerhouse to be on any team, since she's super strong with flight and telepathy and is able to do pretty much anything she sets her mind to. But all of that aside, the most important thing to think about her here is that she's also just a really fun character to read because of her snobby personality. She thinks she's better than everybody, so her dynamics and her relationships with other characters is always really entertaining. Emma's had a pretty busy life on Krakoa, as she's the co-CXO of X-Corp with Angel, and even though the X-Corp book didn't last long because it was just way too boring to read, M was a highlight of it, and it was a lot of fun to see her in a headlining role like that. And let's not forget that M also had the distinction of being one of the X-Men who was sent on like the very first X-Men mission of Krakoa when everyone was sent to space to take out Orcus's mother mold complex and died in the process. On paper, let's be real, M is a great candidate to join the X-Men, and out of all the candidates here, she probably gives the most bang for the buck. Kind of reason enough to give her the vote. Gorgon. Gorgon is the only other villainous character here up for nomination to join the team. He's mostly known for being a Wolverine villain, though when Krakoa first formed, he was bequeathed the honor of being one of the great captains due to his aptitudes with martial arts and fighting. That role didn't last too long for him though, as he died in Otherworld during the Ten of Swords tournament, and after he was resurrected, he came back a bit differently, and it seemed like he needed some hand-holding in getting back to his regular self, which, to be honest, I'm still not sure if he's there yet or not. Gorgon was basically done dirty during the Ten of Swords, him being one of the only two characters to die during it. It was clear as day that he was going to be a sacrificial lamb though, since literally all of the other chosen warriors were like mainstays in the X universe. There was no way that Marvel was going to kill off any of them and have their genomes irrefutably changed in the process. 
For that reason, I kind of think Gorgon deserves a chance on the X-Men. He proved his mettle in that tournament, and he's been playing real nice with everyone on Krakoa ever since he first came to the island, and now it just feels like he's been put out to pasture ever since his resurrection. There currently isn't a martial arts expert on the team, nor is there anyone with his ability to turn stuff to stone, so I think he would be a twofold asset to the team and give it some unique perspectives as well. He's a super genius and is generally a calming kind of presence, like gentle, although Gorgon's calming presence is like a killer calming presence that can snap at a moment's notice. Of the two villainous candidates, Avalanche gets my first vote, but Gorgon here is a close second. Micromax. The final candidate for the new X-Men election is Micromax. Micromax is an obscure character from the first volume of Excalibur, where he joined the team with other obscure characters like Kylan, Kyrus, and Farron. I have no idea how to say Kyrus's name. None of these Second Genesis teammates lasted too long, but I do think that the fans really liked them as they have popped up here and there over time. Micromax probably isn't the one I would personally want from that second iteration of Excalibur to join the team, but he is enough of a deep cut that I can't help but throw all of my main support behind him. He has never really had a big chance to shine, as his exploits during that Excalibur run were relatively few, and then the next time he did anything major in the X-Men's lives, it was kind of as an agent of O.N.E. when they were detaining the 198 mutants in detention camps after the Scarlet Witch's decimation, so his resume isn't really padded with great field experience here. Micromax does have an investigative background though, so he does bring with him a sense of stealth and fieldwork know-how, and he's also got a power that no one else has, which is the ability to change his size. It's actually very rare for a character with this specific power to be on an X-Men team, and aside from characters like Tower in the Alliance of Evil, or Titan from the Imperial Guard, I can't really think of any other notable X characters whose main ability is to change sizes. It's something that I personally would like to see on the team, as I think it would be fun for the writers to use it in new and exciting ways, and I'd like to see what they can come up with. Is Micromax the most deserving person here to get the vote? No, probably not. But because I haven't seen him in such a long time, and because I think his power set is one of the most unique of all the candidates here, he gets my number one vote of all these nominees. And so, those are your candidates for this year's X-Men election, and my thoughts about each one of them. I'm super curious to see what Marvel's plan is to do with the team this year, and I really hope that they aren't just planning to disband the squad each and every summer, because that totally cheapens the good name of X-Men, if you ask me. Please let me know who you'll be voting for in the X-Men election, and don't forget, you only have until the end of January 13th to cast your vote, so make it fast and make it count. If you like this video, please feel free to bum around my channel for more like it. I do reviews and spotlights and anything you can imagine that's pertaining to X-Men, so you're sure to find something you like. You can also follow me on my social media accounts for daily panel scans with clever commentary, or check out my website, greatexpectations.com. Thanks so much for stopping by and spending some time with me today, and be sure to come back again soon for more Great Expectations.